Hey there everyone, welcome back to my channel and here is an update about what I've been doing lately and my camp hosting job and how I've liked it and kind of some reality of the job that was not disclosed but maybe I can help other people choose their next gig in the future if this setup that I'll talk about would work for you. Back in February, well, back at the Big Tent event, I was looking at all the camp hosting opportunities and I had kind of a little bite with one of them, but then that one didn't work out. So I went again online and looked up camp hosting gigs. I picked the state that I wanted to be in and just kind of searched around until I found an opening. And being that it was February, there wasn't too many um, options open. This particular company was uh, just kind of immediately snatched me up, um, didn't have to have any real qualifications, just needed to pass a background check and a driver's check. So really, if you have those two things in your favor, then you are already qualified for the job. The other qualification is whether you have a rig that you can stay in. So I sent a picture of me in my van and they were okay with it. You can also have a trailer, a RV, um, anything. They just want to know whether you need water and whether you need electricity, if that's a mandatory thing for you. You may not have it directly at your site, but they may put you somewhere where you can be within a few miles of another campground that has electricity or Wi-Fi or whatever you would need, have to need. Um, so those are basically the two qualifications, more or less, uh, or three, I guess, that you need to get most camp hosting jobs, I'm guessing. Now, as far as what the job actually has you do, that's what I've been finding out. My job description was day use and relief host. That's it. There wasn't really like a, a breakdown of what you're going to do day to day. They I think contacted some of my references for work ethic and uh, as far as on my end goes I filled out the paperwork online that does the background check and the handbook and things like that so maybe if you look through a handbook it'll give you more of a job description but when I got here and I got to training it was kind of how to deal with campers and they didn't go in depth on how cleaning goes, how your daily schedule goes. They just did like orientation style things, uh, paperwork and your rights, those that type of thing. So you don't actually get too much. I mean, they go over how to check in a camper, uh, the paperwork and the website that we would be using or that campers would be using to reserve sites. So they go into that type of thing. And again, I don't want to say my company because I'm working for them currently. I don't want to cross their social policy. So I will not be disclosing who I worked for until I am finished working for them. I'm only speaking from one point of view, but I'm guessing it'll be either this organized or maybe much less organized. Getting here on the job, first couple days, kind of in the dark, uh, don't know what I'm doing, don't know what's expected of me, don't know what tools I have, and don't know who's going to be coming and helping. Then we look through what has been given to us, our resources, kind of drive around to the different sites. We've got several campgrounds in the area that we kind of are all helping out with each other, and then getting with our managers to see what we need to do and we've been over the last two and a half weeks or so been opening up campgrounds and getting them ready to go for the big holiday coming up memorial weekend uh this video will probably reach you after that holiday so thank you for your patience now i'm realizing what the job description is it's kind of first few weeks to a month you're opening campgrounds and that could include any type of maintenance and any sort of qualifications that you have coming into this job they will ask you to work on even if it's not in your 
you know, quote unquote job description, like day use and relief host sounds like you're just going to kind of hang out with campers a couple days a week. And then the other couple days you're going to be taking day use fees and hanging out with people who are just there for the day, counting cars, um, you know, doing light cleaning to bathrooms. And it doesn't seem like a whole lot. It seems pretty chill. But I've done weed whacking, um, been using the blower, been raking, been moving heavy things, dumping very disgusting trashes, cleaning disgusting pit toilets. We at our particular site haven't gotten our water set up yet, so kind of running short on water and also just ways of cleaning things. Having mop water is awesome, so when we need water, for cleaning just been getting it out of the lake so all of that kind of more maintenance oriented and opening up the campgrounds touching things that haven't been touched in months has been a little tiring uh, and also not having we don't really have a maintenance person for our area so they're gathering a lot of other camp posts from other areas to help us out up here um, we're kind of just a bunch of girls at this point and we can get stuff done, but, uh, it's still, it takes us longer. There's certain things like I can't tip over a dumpster on my own. I need help with that. So I've only had really a couple hours of interactions with campers. The last couple weeks has been pretty strictly labor. They do make it easier on us with company vehicles and ways of getting around but just wasn't prepared for all day work all day labor was hoping to do more just like hanging out I guess everybody says it's gonna get easier I bet it will I bet it'll be more of like um, you know herding cats type of thing working with the public customer service you know and hopefully not too many incidences that's what I'm hoping for that this next week of being a like really open everybody else's campgrounds are open we have a great time yeah that's kind of my two and a half week check-in with you and you know given my age I'm one of the more capable people to do everything but I'm not obviously the only one out here there's people of all ages doing just as much work as me but normally people who have camp hosting jobs are, you know, grandparents and older couples coming out here and just wanting to have a good summer, you know, get a paid campsite and talk to people all day. That's normally who runs these uh, campgrounds, but uh, it's kind of interesting the amount of work asked of us that previously, like, an elderly couple would have been doing this job. I don't see them being able to do all this work because it's pretty darn hard and even if we had one maintenance guy for this area it would take him a long time to get it all set up so I'm thankful that they're sending other people to help us set up but we kind of feel like kind of in the dark and kind of doing some unexpected work I've never used a weed whacker before so I was hoping to not break the machine uh, other people we're using it way more effectively than me. The blower was fun. The bathrooms are, like some of them are horrible. Well, and while others are like super easy to clean. So, and then just access to the tools. I'm lucky that I'm at one of the hub campgrounds, but there's other campgrounds that have had people, you know, had their camp host for a couple weeks as well. And they just haven't been able to touch their campground because they didn't, haven't been allowed to take tools up to them or haven't gotten any tools to take up to them. All of this, I'm just saying, just wanted to give you guys some ideas about what it's like being a camp host, especially beginning of season. I'm going to do check-ins as the summer goes on. And, you know, please ask questions, but I don't want any references to my location or who I work for. Just because that's what I'm asking of you guys. And you guys are super awesome and helpful and always you know there and supporting me so thank you for hanging with me as I have a job <laughs> this is I had a job last summer but I didn't really fill you guys in on it because it wasn't really nomad related I tried to do some other videos to keep you entertained but this summer 
I'm doing something pretty nomad related, so I'll, I'll try to answer as many questions as I can and see what happens. Again, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me. Uh, be sure to check the description below if you want to get to know me on Instagram or on Facebook. I'm also on Patreon if you'd like to become a patron of mine and help support me making more videos and getting uh, updates there from me. Uh, sometimes I put little special things over there. Also check the description for links to my merchandise. I want you to uh, wear some cabbage and egg swag if it if it suits you. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a sweater I think with one of my logos on it. So I'm I'm excited to do that soon because I have a PO box. Okay, this is kind of important. I meant to say this before, but. I have a P.O. box and it will be in the description below. You guys can go down there if you want to send me anything you'd like. Um, I know in the past you guys have been wondering what my uh, mailing address is, but I finally have one for the area. You can send me whatever you'd like there and I'll be doing a postcard send out again soon. So be looking for that. Alright guys, stay curious. And I'll catch you in the next video.